Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Um, in the last video, I showed you guys how to use Nina to do a blind polar alignment if you are ever in a situation where you cannot see Polaris. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use Nina to uh, set up your imaging session uh, to capture your, your data um, and actually show you how, you how to use plate solving to number one, find your object, and number two, frame, uh, two, <laughs> frame your object. Um, and what I'm, about to, what I'm about to show you is going to be very basic and really just on a surface level because there's so much functionality built into Nina that I cannot cover uh, in, in, in the video. Um, so I hope that by showing you how to get started, you will uh, be inspired to explore Nina on your own. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so before we actually fire up Nina, there are a couple of things that we need to take care of, especially if you want to utilize plate solving. But first and foremost, what is plate solving? Um, it is simply a method where you take a picture of the night sky and in that picture, there'll be stars, right? There'll be stars in that picture and what you're doing is essentially telling the computer to compare the star patterns in that image up against a database uh, where the entire night sky has been photographed and Nina or your favorite plate solving software will be able to compare your image to a database and figure out where you are based on the star pattern in that picture. So it is extremely powerful. Uh, you're able to get extremely precise uh, uh, location for uh, either polar alignment or you know finding where your object and how you want to frame it. So in order to get that going, there are a few things you need to download before you boot up Nina. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first of all, you need to download um, you don't need to, but I, I think most people would prefer the ASTAP uh, software for plate solving. So all you need to do is just Google ASTAP and um, you're gonna download the version that works for your operating system. For me, I'm on Windows 64 bit, so I'm gonna download uh, this program installer. And once you downloaded that, you need to download the actual star database that Nina or whatever that you use to play solve will be comparing against. Um, for me, I just picked the the latest large star database, this H18 here. Um, I've used a smaller database. Um, it works out fine, but I figure if I'm going to download it, why not just download the biggest one, right? Um, and the installation process is very simple. Uh, because I already have it installed, I'm not gonna do it again. Uh, you just need to follow the instructions and leave everything on default. Uh, to be honest with you, you don't even need to open this ASTAP um, uh, software because Nina is going to talk to ASTAP in the background. So all you need to do is just download ASTAP, download the large star database or even small star database if you want. Uh, these files are pretty large. Um, and then after that, you can boot up Nina. Okay, so you've downloaded ASTAB and you've uh, installed uh, ASTAB and the star database. Now, you need to fire up Nina and you need to connect Nina with ASTAB. And once you do that, Nina will communicate with ASTAB uh, in the background. You don't even need to open up ASTAB anymore. So I'll show you how to quickly do that. So you wanna go to Nina. Uh, depending on which version you have of Nina, uh, it's always going to be in the option module. Um, the layout may look different based on the version that you download. I highly recommend you download the, the latest beta version. Um, it, it's going to have a little bit more features because uh, a lot of these features are sort of like on trial from Nina. Um, but depending on your version, the layout may look different, but it's always going to be in the option. And then once you're at the option, you want to go to the plate solving tab. Um, and for plate solver up here, you're going to select ASTAP. 
and you're gonna you go for now you can leave everything uh, default right here um, and then under plate solving settings once again you want to select as tap and then all you need to do is you're gonna select or you're gonna find where you install ASTAP. Um, for me, ASTAP was installed over my C drive, then program files, ASTAP, and I just need to select this. Well, I don't need to open it, but um, you just need to tell Nina where you've installed ASTAP, and then Nina will then start to communicate with ASTAP for plate solving uh, in the background. You don't, once again, you don't need to open up ASTAP. Um, and then for now, just starting out, leave everything at default. Um, there's really not much you need to change because uh, Nina has already figured out what you need to do for most people in order to play soft successfully, and you should be good to go. Okay, maybe there is something I wanna bring out when it comes to uh, uh, plate solving settings. And it's really just the exposure time. Um, you wanna make sure that you keep your exposure short enough because depending on your focal length, uh, it's very possible that you, know, you may start running into star-shaped issue at maybe even 10 seconds. And to be frank with you, 10 seconds is way too long of, a, of an exposure just for play solving purposes because you're basically taking images of the night sky for stars and stars are pretty bright. They'll show up as white dots in your image. So you don't need to have a long exposure. For me, I do two seconds and it's plenty good enough. Uh, it's gonna find all the stars that I need to find. And um, I'm likely not going to have any star shape issues at two seconds exposure. Um, gain, uh, like I mentioned in another video, it's gonna be your either ISO setting or you know, the, the gain setting for your camera. Now you can, you can set this at the, high, the highest sensitivity uh, of your camera um, because once again, you know, you're taking images of a nice guy for plate solving. You're just seeing stars. You don't really care about the image quality. So set this as high as your camera can go. Um, I left this blank because um, I switched from a DSLR and a dedicated astro camera. So I just leave it blank. But um, if you are using DSLR only or dedicated astro camera only, you can put your favorite value of ISO or gain here and you're good to go. Okay, so now that your Nina should be able to communicate with ASTAP and there's still uh, daylight left, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to actually go over how to connect your camera and set up your imaging session and how to tell Nina to instruct your camera of the exposure time and how many frames to use and things like that. Um, and it should be pretty simple. And that's the one thing I love about Nina is that everything is really uh, simplistic and easy to use. So before we get started on setting up your camera, uh, just quickly go to the option. And then under the imaging tab, there are all kinds of settings for you to, uh, to pick and choose. But the one thing that I think uh, anyone should do before uh, they use Nina is to tell Nina where your image is gonna be stored. Uh, and you can tell Nina exactly where you want it to be stored and then tell Nina how you want your images and your file names to be named. And I'm not gonna go into too much details here because it's pretty much all self-explanatory. All you need to do is pick out um, you know, what, like how, how, how much info do you want in your, in your file name? This will not impact your files itself. Um, it's only going to give you uh, more information about you know, what the file is when you look at the file name. Okay, so I'll let you guys explore this on your own, but I want to spend more time on the uh, image, Im image sequencing um, for Nina. Um, I'm going to, for now, ignore everything up here and focus down here. This is going to be your actual image sequencer. And this is where you're gonna tell Nina how to, you know, instruct your camera to take, these to take these images for your session. So let's start with time. 
this is going to be your exposure setting. And for the purposes of this video, I'm only going to set this to two seconds. Um, now, when you're actually imaging, you're going to want this to be, you know, in the frame in like one minute to maybe even five, six minutes. So instead of, you know, typing in two seconds, you want to type in like, you know, 300 for five minutes or 360 for six minutes. But, you know, for now, I'm just going to do two seconds. Um, type, this is, going to, this is going to be where you tell Nina whether or not this is a light frame, flat frame, dark frame. Uh, and this will go into your, your image file name. Once again, it doesn't change the file itself. It just, you just have an idea of what the image is without having to open it because you can tell by the file name. Uh, so we're going to use light because we're pretending to image right now. Um, filter, if you're not using a filter wheel, you can leave this blank. Uh, binning, if you're using a DSLR, you can leave this a one by one. But even if you're using a dedicated astro camera, unless you actually need to bin, I believe default is one by one, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. Now, dither, if you are already guiding and you have that all set up, you can tell Nina to turn on guiding. And once again, Nina will have the, uh, will have the uh, uh, ability to communicate with your guider. Um, so you're gonna pretend to turn this on. Well, I'm gonna pretend to turn it on for now. Dither every, one frame or two frames or three frames. It really depends on your preference. So for now, I'm just gonna tell, tell Nina to dither every one frame. I usually tell it to dither every one frame anyways. Um, gain is going to be your, your ISO setting if you're using a DSLR. So for me, I usually shoot in the range of 800 to 3200 ISO. So I'm gonna just pick 16, 1600 for now. Um, offset, I'm going to leave that alone because it doesn't apply to my DSLR, but for a dedicated astro camera, it does apply and you, you need to find out which offset works for your camera. Um, finally, coming back to the total frame, this is where you tell Nina if you want Nina to take 10 frames, 100 frames, 500 frames, whatever. So for now, for demonstration purposes, I'm only going to do 10 frames. And I'm going to call this target test, blah, 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 blah. And there's nothing left for me to do other than press play. And once I do that, um, Nina will tell my camera to start taking pictures at two seconds for a total of 10 frames. And, you know, Nina will have a checklist for every uh, option that you use. So I told it to, oh, <laughs> I didn't connect the, uh, <laughs> the camera and I want to show you how to use a camera. Brilliant. So to connect the camera, <laughs> all you need to do is go to equipment, go to the camera tab, find your camera. For me, it's the Canon 60D and I'm going to hit connect. And then you're gonna have all kinds of information up here once you're connected. Uh, default gain, you can leave this alone. Uh, you don't have to set it. I don't think this does anything, to be honest. Um, so now that your camera is connected, let's go back to the sequencer and hit play. And it's gonna tell me that, you know, oh, I'm telling it to guide and dither, but my guider is not connected. Um, also my, my, by the way, telescope in Nina, it, it, it means your mount. Uh, my mount is not connected. That's fine. I'm only demonstrating. So I'm going to hit OK. But just know that when you're actually setting this up, Nina is going to have these checkpoints for you. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can hear that my camera is going off every two seconds for about for 10 frames. So uh, I'm going to stop the, the session here um, and once it gets dark, then I can go outside and show you how to use plate solving to uh, find and frame your object. Okay, well, still got some daylight left, so I want to take a quick minute to show you uh, how to get Nina 
talking to your uh, your auto your auto guider. And for me, I use PHD two. Uh, it's just easy to use, convenient, and um, you're you're more than welcome to use uh, your favorite auto guiding software. But I think PHD two is probably one of the most popular and probably dominates the field at this point. Um, but similarly to how you set up ASTAB and how you got Nina to communicate with ASTAB, you're gonna do the same thing with the uh, with your auto guider. So you're gonna go under equipment and then guider. And then up here under settings, you're going to essentially tell Nina, uh, in my case, because I'm using PHT2, where I install PHT2. Um, then that's really it, hit OK. And then when, you're, uh, when your guide scope and your guide camera is connected to your computer, all you need to do is just hit connect. Um, and really, that's all you need to do to set up uh, all your equipment for a basic imaging session uh, for Nina. Um, and once again, I'm just gonna wait for darkness and then I will show you um, how to use Nina to play solve, to find your object, how to frame it, and then um, fire up your camera and get going. Okay, uh, so it was nighttime and I can actually show you how to use Nina and using plate solving to find your object and to frame it and then start the sequence. Now, before I start, I just want to say that plate solving is extremely convenient, extremely powerful, but I think that all of you guys are coming from a place where you've already mastered uh, the manual way of doing a lot of the a lot of these astrophotography routines, such as manual plate solving and uh, manual star alignment using, you know, just a simple go-to controller um, or manually star aligning. Because I think those are uh, basic knowledge and, and experience that will be extremely beneficial to you, uh, even when you're using plate solving all the time. Um, you never know when you need to have those basic skills again. Uh, maybe you have this one night where plate solving doesn't work for you. Anyways, so let's get started. And for the purposes of this video, I want to use something that most of us are familiar with, and that would be uh, the Orion Nebula. So I like using Stellarium, and I like having Nina and Stellarium talk to one another. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to tell my mouth to slew over to Orion first. Okay, it's going there. And then I'm going to go over to Nina um, and go over to framing. And I'm going to, under coordinates, I'm going to hit this little button that says get coordinates from planet planetarium. And now that it's gotten the coordinates from Stellarium, I'm going to tell Nina to play solve and center Orion. And to do that, you're going to go down here where it says slew and center. This is essentially your play solving button. And remember from what I said earlier during the video that I told my mouth to settle for 20 seconds just to let all the residual movement uh, after moving to settle down. Okay, and after that, it's gonna take a picture and see where it is. So if you've already done your polar alignment, if you've already done your star alignment, uh, Orion should be fairly close to the center as you see here, it's fairly close to the center. Um, now, obviously, this is not center enough. So uh, Nina is telling, me, is telling me that the telescope is not inside tolerance and is going to move again and then take another picture. Um, one weird thing about Nina is that when it's done plate solving, <laughs> it doesn't tell you that it's done. Like the, uh, the messages down here, they just disappear. Um, so when you see no messages down here, and uh, then you know play solving is finished. And also when, when play solving is done, 
this, uh, this pop-up window here, uh, it will also go away. But for some reason, it doesn't tell you that plate solving is done. I don't know why. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so play solving is finished. Right now, Orion should be in the center of my frame. And you can see that the messages are gone and the pop-up window is gone as well. And just to confirm, I will take one more image right now. This is a two second frame from the play solving. I will take one image right now. At five seconds, just to confirm that my Orion is in the center of the frame. You should see this change a little bit because I'm going from two seconds to five seconds, five second exposure. There. So now that I've confirmed Orion is indeed in the center of my frame, I can actually start imaging if I'm satisfied with this framing. And you can, uh, if you're satisfied, you can go over to the sequencer and just put in your camera setting as I have discussed earlier in the video to the way that you want it. However, what if you're not satisfied with just having Orion in the middle of the frame? Well, you can actually move that around if you like. So do you see... Um, do you see the borders here? The borders here represent your picture essentially. So let's just say that I want Orion uh, in the corner. The one thing I don't like about this is that I, I can never tell, and maybe it's, just, maybe it's a personal issue, <laughs> I can never tell which corner is which. So um, I'm just gonna say, okay, I wanna put Orion in this corner and then I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna tell Nina to play solve again until Orion is in this corner, which I think it's gonna to be top left. I don't know. So, so my mount moved a little bit and then it's gonna wait 20 seconds and then it's gonna take a picture to see how close it is to the way I have it framed. So as you can tell, as you can see, um, plate solving is extremely powerful. Um, it will save you a lot of time. It'll, it, if you do it right, it will save you a lot of headache. But as I mentioned earlier, you should you should be coming into this having already mastered some of the manual methods. Um, because I think, you know, going through those manual routines, those manual processes, it'll teach you a lot about just what a typical night is like for astrophotography. Because believe it or not, you're going to have some nights where plate solving doesn't work for you for one reason or another. Um, and instead of spending your entire night trying to figure out your settings and what isn't working and what is working, you can still do astrophotography by finding your own, uh, your own image and framing it yourself. It may take a little longer, it may take a little bit more trial and error, but you know, knowing those basics, I really think it's beneficial for you. <clears throat> There's no denying that place solving is extremely powerful and convenient. So, you know, when you can use both, I think that's really awesome because either way, you should be able to get an image going for any for any any typical night. <clears throat> so And you know, really depending on your mount, you may not have to use, you may not have to set this to 20 seconds. 
uh, but with my HUQ5, I find that 20 seconds is it's it's really good, and I almost never have any sort of uh, blurry images because my mount is still settling. Because after 20 seconds, it should not it should not be having any of that residual movement anymore. If you have a better mount, uh, you could probably get away with like you know five seconds of settling time. Um, Okay, so place solving is done. Let's see where we are. Okay, so that little corner translated to <laughs> down here. But as you can tell from earlier, it did move from middle of the frame to, uh, to I guess, the bottom. Maybe, maybe this was... Um, Maybe this was landscape or portrait. Um, you can also rotate this around until you know the way that you want it to. So play it around with this. Uh, it's really powerful. Um, okay, so let's just say that I am happy with this framing. Then I will go to the sequencer and put in everything that I talked about earlier except now that we're actually ready to image. Um, I'm going to put a delay start of five seconds. You don't have to, but this, this just tells the, uh, the, the, the sequencer to wait five seconds after I press this button. Um, the name for this target, I'm going to say test. Uh, sequence mode, one after another, I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, leave that alone, leave that alone, leave that alone. Now, depending on your version of Nina, this top part may look a little bit different. Um, target option. Now, if you haven't played Solve yet, this is where you would do it. Um, you would tell Nina to slew the target, center target, uh, and rotate target in case you want uh, you have like a like a specific orientation you wanted to match But because I've already done all of this. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna set all of this to off however, I Am going to tell Nina to start guiding. I'm gonna so I'm gonna turn this on um, my Guider it's already connected You can see down here PhD 2 um, and Nina and PhD2 will talk to one another, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna set this to five seconds. I'm gonna do 10 shots. Actually, I'm gonna set this to two minutes. Yeah. Set this to two minutes. Oh, I keep touching the, the mouse pad. <laughs> Light frame, dither. I'm just gonna say dither every every frame. Gain or ISO 1600, that's fine. Um, and then when I press start, it's gonna delay for five seconds. And then it's going to tell PhD 2 to start guiding and also one last thing is um, I'm gonna tell Nina to tell my mount to park when this session is over um, this this is really helpful uh, when you want to set this to run overnight and go to sleep so then uh, so then the mount will park at, at the home position so you don't have to worry about your equipment slamming into a tripod Okay, so all there is to do now is press start. And after the five second delay, it's going to say start guiding. And if I go over to PhD2, it's already started. And I'm gonna let this run. And uh, right now PhD2 is calibrating. Once it's done calibrating, 
it's going to tell Nina to start the sequence. Um, and you're not going to see a picture from this session because I'm actually going to be moving on to a different project. But I just hope that, you know, by using Orion, it's, a, it's an easy target for everyone, for me to demonstrate how to do this. And I really hope that uh, when you guys go and try this, you know, pick a target that you're already familiar with or something that is easy to you so that you know, when you're practicing a new routine, a new software, um, you're not going to be surprised, at the very least, not going to be surprised by the target. Um, so I'm going to let PhD2 to continue calibrating. And then when it's done calibrating, um, I'll show you what the, uh, what the first sub looks like when it's done. It looks like PhD2 is finished guide is finished calibrating. So And by the way, like all of this is done automatically with Nina. So um, it, it's ability to talk to different software and have everything laid out for you um, really conveniently is why I love Nina so much. Um, so I told, I told Nina to, uh, to settle, uh, let's see, where do I find an option? Yeah. So I told Nina to settle for about 60 seconds, um, before taking the first image after guiding. No. Oh, okay. Well. Either way, it started. <laughs> it started taking the picture. Um, so, in two minutes' time, I should have a. Uh, I should have the first sub for you to check out how Orion looks using Nina in this preview. Um, so, I'm just gonna fast forward to when that happens. Okay, so it's been two minutes. Let's see what that image looks like. Now, remember, this is only a stretch preview. So this is what a uh, one individual frame looks like coming from Nina. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> my memory card went out of space. So uh, sorry for the abrupt stop, but I think you get the point now. Um, and now, of course, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's a lot more functionality built into Nina. And it's impossible for me to cover all the topics because um, there's a lot of them. And to be honest with you, I don't know how to use a lot of them myself. So I'm learning as I go. But I hope that you know this introduction to how to set up Nina and how to run an imaging session using Nina will get you involved and you can start exploring Nina on your own. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, it's super easy to use. Uh, it makes a lot of uh, a lot of um, processes and, and routines in astrophotography a lot simpler. Um, so. I hope that you found this video to be useful and I hope that you will uh, give Nina a try. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. And so take care and I wish you all clear skies and good health. Anyways, take care. Bye bye. <laughs>